वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज आ वीकली रैप ऑफ ऑल दैट मेड द न्यूज ऑल दैट डिडेंट एंड ऑल दैट शुड हैव एंड ऑल दैट शुडेंट हैव वी अग्री वी डिसग्री विद क्रिटिक एंड ओकेजनली वी बीट इच अदर अप बट इट्स ऑल गुड फन सब्सक्राइब दिस इज अ न्यूज लॉन्ड्री पॉडकास्ट एंड योर लिसनिंग टू एन एल हफ्ता अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ हफ्ता इट इज एपिसोड 365 माय गॉड एज मेनी डेज इन अ ईयर हफ्ता हैज बीन हियर एवरी वीक फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम टुडे इज द 28th ऑफ जनवरी 11 एएम फ्राइडे व्हेन वी रिकॉर्ड दिस वी यूजुअली रिकॉर्ड हफ्ता ऑन थर्सडे बट टुडे वी हैव रिकॉर्ड ऑन फ्राइडे टू अकोमोडेट अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट हु वी डोंट गेट टू ऑन हफ्ता फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड फाइनली शी इज हियर हर नेम इज निशा सुजन हाय निशा Hi hi thank you for making this happen and uh, nisha uh, many of you would already know her you have read her writing she has also written a book the women who forgot to invent facebook and other stories in fact i saw a lot of chatter about this book online uh, nisha you may have also seen her at the media rumble that was 3 years ago nisha when you were at the media rumble yes that's right yeah and we were so keen to have you back but then we haven't had a physical media rumble for 2 years now I Hopefully. look forward to it. Yeah, yes. I had a really good time the last time round. No, your sessions are also amazing. I got a lot of great feedback. So Nisha is an independent journalist and she's an author. Like I said, her latest book is "The Women Who Forgot to Invent Facebook and Other Stories." The other people on the panel today are Raman Kripal. Hi, Raman sir. How are you? Hi. How are you? Very well. You're uh, in your home in Noida, I believe. The yes, st- yes. The state that is going to go to polls. We have UP I elections. Know. We'll be talking about. Joining us on the phone line again is Anand Vardhan. Hi, Anand. Hello. And where are you? Are you in Delhi right now? Uh, yes, I am in Delhi. Well, uh, I hope you are warm because Delhi is kind of cold. And of course, joining us is our very own Jayshree from Chennai, who Hello. will have a can few I... snarky things to say about Delhi. I'm sure. Yeah. Can I just point out that we're also experiencing a cold wave in Chennai? <laughs> Not that anyone cares. But... <laughs> okay. Jayshree, just like hang on. <laughs> Please. I had just heard... setting yourself all, up. All that, yeah. all that we know about <laughs> Chennai is uh, um, they have a weather hot, hotter and hotter. So <laughs> this joke has been made for 50 years so I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> But no I I had heard I mean I I heard that uh, Kolkata had hit 11 degrees and there were like woolens out and I had heard Okay we can't compare it to Kolkata or I think like Bombay also then, was some 14 degrees Yes Bombay hit like 13 degrees so what are you, what I would say we were uh, we were early 20s I won't say how early in the 20s <laughs> but 20 It was no, oh not even twenty. Oh dear 20, God! <laughs> it was but, under twenty-five. It was extremely exciting. But but I will say one thing. Uh, it's a miracle that the Tamil film industry is so huge, because the few times I have shot in Chennai or in close by areas. Uh, especially since my anchors, uh, Rocky and Mayur, there were other anchors also who had that problem. If they didn't get it right in the second take, an out outdoor shot. Uh, they'd have to change their shirt it was that bad <laughs> especially rocky cuz cuz he would even sweat in delhi like i'm talking about delhi like march so okay, chennai but De- delhi summers are hideous no so. no but i'm talking about march so but in chennai once he got out of the ac he says okay we got to get this right in two takes if by the second take it's not okay the shirt is wet so that's that <laughs> So the typical Delhi attitude, may I say? <laughs> This is why we visit only for two weeks and leave. All right, and we can't wait for you to visit again, Jeshi. It's been too long. But uh, before we get into the headlines and the discussion, and there's lots that Nisha will be speaking to us about, I have a few announcements. Uh, one, we have a new NL Sena project up. It is for the Assembly election 2022 coverage. The entire budget outlay is 23 lakh 21 thousand 200 rupees. We have already raised thirteen lakh thirty thousand rupees at the time of recording this. So thank you all who have contributed. I would say at one point it was considered a miracle if you could get people to power journalism, uh, but you guys uh, make it possible. So thank you. We are still about ten lakhs short. So do tell your friends, family, those of you who've contributed. Thank you very much. Those of you who haven't, please do consider it. The link will be in the show notes. You can also go to newslearning dot com and click on our latest Sena project. Akanksha and Shivangi will be in Eastern UP. Ayush and Ashwini will be covering Punjab. Basant will be covering Western UP. Uh, and Basant has requested that a producer go with him, so we're trying to make it happen because it's difficult for him to report and shoot at the same time. Nidhi Pratik, along with one producer, uh, which is our very own Aditya, will be in Goa. Manisha, Meghna, and Atul are already in Goa with two producers. That is Lippy 
and Parikshit, uh, and they've started a weekly show from there. And uh, I think, uh, and and we have someone in Manipur also, right, sir? Uh, someone Pradeep. we've got. Pradeep. Yes, Pradeep is in, and uh, Ridesh, and Ridesh and Ridesh, Ridesh will be in Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand. Ridesh will also go to Western UP. Okay, he'll go to Western UP. So, like I had made that lame joke last time, which I was only partly joking because there were nervous laughters in in office that I had requested all reporters to stay at Gurdwaras, eat there, and uh, for the night dinner, go to any press conference where they'd get a drink and dinner. But they all requested that they get hotel rooms because they apparently have to charge their phones and all. So we have said, okay, we'll make hotel rooms available. So I hope you can top up the budget so they are provided for and bring you coverage that is funded not by ads, Sarkari ads, which you've seen have been bombarding TV. In fact, Akhilesh Yadav took a very appropriate pot shot at the channels who are completely funded by Sarkari ads. Uh, we depend on you. So I repeat, go to newslaundry.com, click on the Sena project. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, do click on the subscribe button and become a subscriber so you can pay to keep news free. Also, uh, many of you have offered in the past your cars, um, your homes. Many of you have uh, extra homes in cities we go to for our reporters so that we can save money and not have to pay hotels. Um, if you do have any office which has broadband, because places like Goa, uh, Banaras, Lucknow, these are you know big cities. So if you're in one end, to go back to your hotel to upload the story can get a bit tedious. Uh, so if you do have homes where you can even just offer an hour or two or an office in different parts of the city where our team can go upload their stories and come back, we have a community called the Friends of News Laundry Community. Many of you offer all sorts of infrastructure help uh, and vehicle help. Uh, so you can mail us at subscription at newslaundry.com. I repeat, subscription at newslaundry.com. In the subject line, please write Friends of News Laundry. And in the mail, you can tell us what support you can provide. And uh, we will do a due diligence on you so that you don't kidnap our reporters and are not political active actors in any way. And uh, then once you've done that due diligence on you, uh, you will be added to the Friends of News Laundry database and we will reach out for help whenever we do need it. Thank you so much. And what is wonderful about News Laundry is it is, it is built by all of you as much as it is built by all of us. On that note, uh, Jayashri, please, can you give us the headlines? We shall get into the discussion then. Yeah. So here's the headlines of the week. Former Vice President Hamid Ansari created an uproar after he made certain comments at a U.S. forum on the rise of Hindu nationalism. In the citizenship law protest, a Delhi court has framed sedition charges against Shaji Imam. Meanwhile, uh, I think citizens have marked one year of Omar Khalid's imprisonment. Kerala High Court has granted actor Dilip relief from arrest in the case of conspiracy to kill cops. Meanwhile, after the acquittal of former Bishop Franco, hundreds have written to the Kerala nun who lost the case. A Karnataka college um, has been accused of discrimination and violating the law after it's disallowed students from wearing headscarves. However, the Karnataka education minister has said this is indiscipline and there's no place for religion in, in, in an educational institution. A train was set on fire at Bihar station during protests over railway jobs. Uh, Air India's takeover of Tata Group is underway. Finalizing directors is the first step in a long overhaul. Meanwhile, Amit Shah has warned that Gunda Raj will return to UP if Akhilesh Yadav forms government. Uh, Yogi Aitena tweeted on Friday morning. Unfortunately, it's in Hindi, so I can't actually read. Uh... Allow me. Yes, thank you. So uh, he says, "We Jinna ke upasak hain. Ham Sardar Patel ke pujari hain. Unko Pakistan pyara hai. Ham Ma Bharati par jaan nyochhavar karte hain." So uh, yeah, and along the same lines, uh, I think Amit Shah also said something, right? Which was that. They fought Mughals. He said, Jats fought Mughals. We too are fighting in a clip that has now gone viral. Right. So BJP is also apparently fighting Mughals. I don't, didn't know they were... <laughs> I, I knew they were the largest political party. I didn't know they were that old though. <laughs> hmm. uh, Yogi Nath, also in Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Nath has said that where the SP has built Hajj House, we have built Mansarovar Bhavan. So the difference is clear, he has said. A day after the BJP extends its hand, uh, the Rashtriya Lokdal chief Jain says he is not a coin that he will flip. In the Goa election, uh, Manohar Parikar's son has filed a nomination as an independent candidate after he did not re receive the BJP ticket that he wanted. Right. In Punjab, the BJP will contest in 65 seats, while Amarinder Singh's party will contest on 37. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has kick-started his Punjab campaign by offering prayers at Golden Temple. There are also news reports that five Congress MPs were boycotting Rahul Gandhi's Punjab visit. 
and i think this became quite a controversy and because it is a completely fictitious report with no and now there has been a case that has a legal notice has been sent to the channels that did report this it was mischievous clearly speaking of mischievous channels uh, a delhi court has sought action taken report from the police in the case of communal speeches made by sudarshan tv's editor in chief international news joe biden has warned of possible russian invasion of ukraine in february and it seems all talks are breaking down between although the foreign ministers and and blinken from the us uh, and the foreign minister of russia have said that they will meet again and discuss this again but um, i i don't know where it's heading uh, there is a threat now very real that america will be able to prevail on swift which is the international messaging service for banks to take russia off which is considered the nuclear option when it comes to uh, you know economic sanctions uh, but let's see if they go there because if they go there you can't come back from there and of course in the nuns case which is what we want to discuss in some detail with nisha susan the nun who did lose the case of rape has received thousands if not hundreds of thousands of letters of support it's full of massive victim shaming there is uh, accusations of the nun having had an affair with someone and say i mean this whole accusation that she had an affair and she wanted to cover up the affair and to cover up the affair she did this uh, allegation of rape i mean all of this is actually we have excellent legal precedent to say that anybody's sexual history should not be you know uh, a weighing factor to decide whether uh, she has been assaulted or not but i mean it's like some super porno pulpy uh, you know reading when you read the details in this judgment so i mean so that has also created a lot of upset um and and the fact that the nuns who supported the survivor like publicly supported the survivor they were all had a difficult time one uh, one nun sister lucy kalapra has actually been expelled uh, for her public position in these in in these years so it's fairly gross right i mean in religious institutions everywhere in the world women are the ones who do the work of running the institutions you know uh, they are the ones who run the institutions literally um, in in service and also metaphorically by maintaining faith and this is this is true of churches as well churches are full of women and i feel like the kind of thing that has happened to catholic women uh, through this case is something that is not like being discussed enough i have a friend in kochi who i have known for 20 years i think pretty much every major decision in her life was has been taken by thinking it through terms of god and faith and like who she should marry how she should conduct her life how she should manage her emotions all of these things and a few months ago when i sent her some message about something that's going on in church she sent me a message saying i'm no longer catholic i'm out of the church done 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 i hope the nuns leave soon this this is what she said to me and i mean i also want to mention another another person who is a um, sort of working class woman uh from uh, coastal karnataka who's also catholic and um i was thinking of going to a sort of catholic women's group uh, discussion about this case and i asked her you know do you want to come along and um now her name is padma or so i thought okay this woman but only after about a year i found out that her name is not padma her name is fatma like our lady of fatma and because she lives in coastal karnataka she has been padma for her entire adult life because she said to me i will never get a job if i'm fatma right so she is a christian who is afraid of being seen as a muslim so is masquerading as a hindu anyway i asked her do you want to come to this catholic thing and she said to me i believe no women should go to church okay she said i believe women should pray to god but i believe no women should go to church as long as church are run by men i see uh, and, and the kind of support this nun has got is pretty amazing i mean at least from a, f- a couple of articles that i read uh, i think one of them was in the news minute uh, that there were like hundreds of thousands of letters of support that went but does that mean anything does does that lead to anything other than of course that you feel and i do think morale is uh, underrated and underestimated what it can do at, to make people strong but and i'm sure that would help uh, you know the survivor but other than that just like the jessica lal case is going to reopen the case reinvestigation 
is anything expected to come off all these letters of support i hope so yeah i mean but nothing yet in, yeah if, no nothing i mean it's just happened right this I, but i i hope so and you know if i didn't hope so then i mean it would be very hard to live in this world right because every morning you open the news and the only sentence that comes to mind and it's that internet uh, thing of saying why are men like why are men why are they like this i i see it a little differently see i see it more uh, you know a problem of unemployment students have just come out of their universities and now they are looking for a job and uh, after army railway is the biggest recruiter okay and i think uh, a few uh, years ago i had got a story done uh, about the railway recruitment where for the non technical post even the post like peons so you had graduates and post graduates you know joining those uh, uh, yeah i i remember reading about this regularly uh, hmm. now this is very very uh, ad hoc uh, kind of system where you just decide to add another level uh, to an exam where the students have uh, you know some some of them have passed i see it more uh, you know uh, a movement you know gathering up against the unemployment and uh, i personally feel that it can also political politically impact the you know election in the neighboring uttar pradesh because it's, it's a silent it was a kind of silent thing previously but now with this railway recruitment i think it is getting articulated and uh, it it may cause a problem and i think it's a issue worth covering uh, for the media all of you listening in the chota hafta do subscribe so you can listen to the entire hafta we will see you again next week with the hafta till then subscribe pay to keep news free because when the public pays the public is served and advertisers pay advertisers are served thank you goodbye all the news laundry podcasts are available on stitcher itunes and any other podcast platform please subscribe to news laundry help us keep news independent to catch all our podcasts on news pop culture current affairs and sport visit newslaundry.com follow us on facebook twitter and instagram and subscribe to our youtube channel sunli africa mufat khoro not to brag or anything but news laundry hafta features in the top 50 in the world on soundcloud in the news and politics category for podcasts so do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe help keep news independent and free all news laundry podcasts are available on itunes and stitcher and any other podcast platform